Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Well, from time to time, we take a look at channels that have kind of a unique take on how they present history. And there are several channels who use maps to do that. And one channel I just recently discovered is called The Dragon Historian. Uh, I've looked through the list of the videos that he's done. Haven't watched any of them yet because they're all potentials for reactions and I don't watch videos ahead of time if I think I'm going to do a reaction to them. Uh, but this one is called The History of the United States Every Year and it does that using maps. So I would imagine we're going back to the earliest European colonies and we'll kind of watch through the map as all of that unfolds. And it'll give us an opportunity to kind of talk through what's happening. And, and I think that using a medium like a map is a unique way to do this because it allows us to see why certain decisions were made, why things unfolded the way that they did. It's just a very clever way uh, to look at history from a different perspective. We talked in a recent video about how you can look at history through particular lenses and see something different. If I look through the lens of the economy, if we look through the lens of bread, as we did in a recent video, we see things differently. We understand decisions that are made differently. So hopefully that'll uh, happen again today as we take a look at the Dragon Historian. It's got over 51,000 subscribers now. The link will be in the description to the original content so you can check it out and check out whatever other videos that channel has that might interest you. I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Colby Robert from Texas. Uh, for your support on Patreon. Thank you so much. Our Patreon supporters uh, and our members here on YouTube are such a, a, a vital component of what I do uh, in making it possible for me to do this. So thank you for that. Let's go ahead and dive into this one. All right, so I'm just as it starts, I'm going to go ahead and pause, and I'm going to keep the volume pretty low on the sound because it's just going to be music playing anyway, and this will allow for me to be able to narrate over top of it easier. So I wanted to pause right at the beginning just to take a look at what we're looking at. Um, obviously, we see down here uh, some of the Spanish uh, holdings in what will become Florida. Uh, it's generally agreed that the oldest continual continually lived in settlement in what is now the United States would be St. Augustine, Florida, which predates uh, by decades, if not almost a century, the uh, settlement at Jamestown, which comes about in 1607, which is the date we're looking at here. Obviously, King James I has just come to the throne. This is a few years after Queen Elizabeth, his cousin, has died. Uh, and so we've got a lot of information. It looks like it's presenting to us. We're going to see who the leader is of uh, first England and then later Great Britain and then the United Kingdom. Um, as Well, I guess the UK doesn't come about until after the United States is independent. But uh, the type of government, the capital, the religions of the uh, the mother country and also the colonies, the language that is spoken. Uh, and then, of course, it looks like we see uh, here the Iroquois Confederacy. You've got like the five nations of the Iroquois, the Seneca, Cayuga, uh, Onondaga. Onondaga. I'm not, we're actually not really familiar with that one. Oneida and Mohawk. Uh, and a lot of these other areas here that we see, I'm guessing because we don't really have, there hasn't been significant enough contact with them in 1607. For us to know exactly where they are, we're just kind of estimating. Plus, uh, the idea of territory is very different for many of these native tribes who move around a lot. Uh, so I totally get all that. So we see Jamestown here, uh, the Powhatan Confederacy. That is the, uh, the people they're going to come in contact with first. That includes people like uh, my grandma Pocahontas. I'm descended from her from both of my parents. And then we're going to see, I guess we're just kind of paused on 16. Okay, now we're starting to move. Uh, so we're going to next see uh, Spain's going to move in a little more in Florida. We're going to see um, Plymouth, 1620. Uh, they were originally supposed to hit a little further down this way, but they ended up a little too far north. So now you've really got two spots that English settlements are. You've got Virginia and you've got Massachusetts. Uh, at least that's the modern states that those are a part of. Massachusetts Bay. So now you have Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, this is just a decade after uh, the Plymouth Colony. Boston has been founded. There's Maryland has now been founded. 
So Saybrook, Connecticut, uh, my wife's ancestor, uh, David Gardner, is going to be the first white child born in Connecticut, in Saybrook, um, and, and that little island right off the coast of Long Island, at the end of Long Island, is called Gardner's Island, and his father, Lion Gardner, who's my wife and children's ancestor, uh, uh, owned that land, and it's still in the Gardner family, and uh, uh, also descended from that family is Julia Gardner Tyler, who uh, was a first lady, and uh, one of those grandsons that was still living uh, up until recently, I think he may be dead now. I think uh, the two grandsons that were living of John Tyler were Harrison and Lion Tyler, Lion Gardner Tyler, who's named after him. So now we're in the 1650, and I'm just pausing to kind of take a look at things here. Um, this is now the Commonwealth of England. It's a military dictatorship under Oliver Cromwell, uh, who has overthrown and had beheaded King Charles I. Uh, and you can see at the time that all of that was going on, uh, the colonies are still relatively small. New Haven, Connecticut is going to become important. It's where Yale University is. Uh, it's also where in my family, I'm sorry, you're going to have to get drunk early today with the drinking game, the BTH drinking game. If you're not familiar with it, there's a video about it. Um, but uh, one of my ancestors, who was one of the generals under Cromwell, who signed the death warrant of Charles I, is going to have to flee when the restoration of the monarchy happens. And he's going to flee to New Haven, Connecticut, where he's going to hide just outside of town. So Oliver Cromwell is the Lord Protector. We're going to have the restoration of the monarchy now under Charles II. Uh, so now we can see there's Virginia, there's Maryland. Uh, you can see now that most of what is modern Ohio is controlled by. Uh, you've got the Erie here. You've got the Lenape, who are sometimes known as the Delaware Indians, which doesn't make a lot of sense because Delaware is an English name uh, for Delaware, who is a, um, an English uh, member of the nobility. Uh, but the Lenape are there uh, right in that area in what becomes Delaware, right around uh, what becomes Philadelphia as well. Uh, but still, I mean, really very little in the way of settlements. We're only half a century after Jamestown at this point. There's the Carolinas. Of course, Charles is king. So Carol being the Latin form of Charles, that's why uh, the Carolina settlement is going to happen. Uh, now New York City has been founded. New York City was originally a Dutch settlement, New Amsterdam. Uh, and the Dutch are going to uh, settle along the Hudson River right here. And, uh, in fact, our one United States president who's, for whom his first language was not English was Martin Van Buren, who was born in this Hudson River Valley to a Dutch family. But you can see it's all still held to the coast. There's Charlestown, again, named after the king. Uh, but everything is connected to the coast. There's not really a lot of spread inland. Uh, and even at the time of uh, the American Revolution, we still have not really spread too far to the West. A lot of uh, solidifying now of all of this area. Uh, Canada's not really been settled yet. Massachusetts Bay Colony includes modern-day Maine, and it will until well after the United States becomes an independent nation. You see New York controls what uh, will become Vermont, now, everything is uh, briefly under New England, and then it goes back again. And now you have Mary and William, uh, who are ruling jointly as Mary and uh, Mary II, William III. Now William is ruling alone because Mary has died. Um, but now we see New Jersey. New Jersey, um, the West Jersey and East Jersey um, settlements are going to be uh, founded, I think, primarily by... Quakers. In fact, uh, on my direct mail line, my, my direct mail line is Snowden. That's my father's last name. Um, my, my Snowden ancestors who came, uh, came over from Nottingham, and they were Quakers. And my ninth great-grandfather was one of the people who signed this compact that created New Jersey. Uh, he was one of those ori original people who signed this charter over in England before they even came over. And so New Jersey and Pennsylvania are both settled originally by Quakers. 
the area around Philadelphia also uh, was New Sweden for a while. So there were Swedish settlements briefly there for a while. Remember, Sweden was once a pretty major superpower on the world stage uh, in Europe. Uh, but now we're starting to see more and more happening. Now we see a lot more of the native settlements because as uh, these colonies are being formed, there's more contact with the natives. And so there's a better understanding of who is where. And we're writing down some of that history. So we're a little more aware of what's going on. There's a lot more Spanish set settlements happening down in this area. We're going to see the French come in uh, with fur trappers and things like that over here further to the west. Uh, there you go. Now you have New Spain. It's 1706. Queen Anne is the last Stuart monarch. She's about to die, and it's gonna and is gonna be replaced by uh, George the First, Georg the First of Hanover, who is German. Um, there we go. Now we uh, we see for the first time the Kingdom of Great Britain. And so the color changed to reflect that. Uh, up until this time, England and Scotland are two separate kingdoms in a union of crowns. They have the same monarch, but they're still separate. Now they're united for the first time. And so Great Britain, that entire island, Wales, England, Scotland, all one political entity for, for the first time. And now they're going to be under George I. So George I doesn't speak English, uh, and so he leaves a lot of the governance to uh, the guy who will become the first prime minister, Robert Walpole. And uh, not a lot changing yet. You still see Charlestown here. you got a lot of space uh, between there and North Carolina. Georgia is not really developing yet. Still, though, just barely in to the coast. Williamsburg still the major political center in Virginia. Um, the area that will become Richmond, that will become the capital later, is really not thought of uh, too much at this point on the map. Um, most of Pennsylvania is still under natives, and that will be the case. I mean, even into the 1750s and 1760s, when you get into the French and Indian War, this is all still the frontier. I mean, the central and western Pennsylvania are still the frontier. So now Virginia has spread much further to the west. There's more and more people. The population, I actually kind of wish he would have put the population on here as well of the 13 colonies. But I guess we're not focused only on the 13 colonies, but that's the information that's over here on the right. So um, I think we have a pretty fair understanding of what the population is. But now we're, we're 50 years from the revolution. So we're getting closer and closer. Really, the only states that, uh, have the, the the shape that their final form will take right now are New Jersey, Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Uh, New York, still very little of New York is actually uh, part of that colony, very little of Pennsylvania, maybe half of Maryland, less than half of Virginia, a good chunk of North and South Carolina. There's Georgia for the first time. And again, you can get a lot of an idea of when these colonies were formed based on the names. The Carolinas are, are formed when there's a king named Charles on the throne. Makes sense. Georgia is formed when there's a king named George on the throne. Uh, Jamestown, when King James. You get the, the point. And, of course, some of them have connections to England back home with the names like Boston and, and Portsmouth and New York and uh, New Jersey. These are all directly from names from Great Britain. George II is now king. Also, his first language was German, but he did speak English. And then in 1760, his grandson, George III, is going to become king. And now, uh, for the first time, we see a lot of this area being listed as English. At least the colors are English. And, of course, that's going to change after the French and Indian Wars because there's going to be a treaty with these natives that's basically going to keep these settlements east of the Appalachian Mountains, which you can roughly see where the mountains are based on where the colony borders are, the dark red parts. And now the French... For the first time, uh, La Nouvelle Orléans, New Orleans, um, is there. 
uh, in the Baton Rouge. Red Post is basically the name. Uh, Detroit, that's Detroit. Uh, some French names kind of showing up here. So now there you go. Now you see all of that change to purple. Now we're into the French and Indian War. Part of the, the larger Seven Years War. And boom, now we're into 1776. The United States of America uh, is formed. And you can see kind of nominally where those colonies are. Um, and these tribes down here, the Chickasaw, for example, they're now in central Oklahoma. I've spent time on the Chickasaw Re uh, Reservation. Wonderful people. Had an amazing time. I spoke for a group of students there. Did Rachel's Challenge uh on a weekend and they they did some like performances for me i got to see some of their culture it was really really cool stuff but they these are the tribes that are going to end up being sent west as part of the what we call the trail of tears resettlement west of the mississippi uh so now this is the end of the american revolution 1783 is when that comes to an end um and now you can see virginia not only includes modern-day West Virginia, but eastern Kentucky. Um, and, and now we're going to start to see the spread west of the Appalachians. A lot of that comes in part because um, the government didn't have a lot of money, and they weren't really paying the troops <laughs> that were fighting in the revolution, didn't have money to, to pay them. Uh, and so a lot of the reward for your service in the Revolutionary War was in the form of land grants. And where are you going to get the land to give to all of these tens of thousands of men who served? Well, look at all this new land that has just opened up west of the Appalachian Mountains because we're no longer treaty bound by the treaty that the British made with those native tribes. And so now Ohio is going to start to be settled. Marietta is going to be the first permanent settlement uh, city in Ohio uh, right along the Ohio River down here uh, in the late 1780s. Uh, the Northwest Territory is going to be formed. So now you see the United States is, is claiming everything to the Mississippi River. Well, there's people there, and they may not like that, but what are they going to do about it? Virginia claims everything uh, in what is modern Kentucky. Uh, Connecticut is going to, this area here that's shown as the Erie, um, tribe, that's all going to become the Connecticut Western Reserve. If you just draw a map straight west, they couldn't claim Pennsylvania, but they could claim what was west of Pennsylvania, so they did. Um, Tennessee is going to be formed here. These are going to be the first two states formed. Uh, there's Kentucky. There's the Northwest Territory. We're going to see Tennessee formed here very soon. So now we've got a spread. Why? Because 1803... Napoleon uh, gets the Louisiana Territory from the Spanish, and he's going to flip that to the, to the United States for some cash, I think $15 million, uh, after the, there was a, a slave uprising in Haiti. And then Napoleon very briefly tries to retake Haiti, and it doesn't go well. And so he decides he's got his hands full enough in Europe as it is. He really can't be dealing with managing overseas colonies. And so he sells the Louisiana Territory to Thomas Jefferson and the American government. And so then Jefferson's going to send Lewis and Clark out there. But now all of this territory right here is claimed by the United States. But again, there are people living there already. Uh, so even as natives are still living in Mississippi, Alabama, most of Tennessee, western Georgia, the United States is already thinking about further west. And this is where you're going to start to get the idea of manifest destiny. In other words, the United States is destined. It, is, uh, it must spread all the way to the Pacific. Uh, the Northwest Territories are formed. Ohio is the first of the five states that are going to be formed out of that. Maybe six if you count parts of Minnesota. Um, but you can see Ohio is formed here. 1803, it becomes a state. And people are going to flood into Ohio uh, to the point where uh, it's, going to, it's going to become one of the largest states. New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and Ohio are going to be the four most populous states in America for a long time. Um, and very influential, very powerful states. 
Uh, now Indiana has been formed, and there's a there's kind of a um, there's a standard that is set for how how many people need to live there and a process for for becoming a state. So there's a lot of forward thinking about okay, we know there are going to be more states added, so let's create a process for how this can happen. Uh, so. Uh, you have the original 13 colonies, and then you're going to add Ohio. I mean, you're going to add Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, Ohio, Vermont, uh, these states, uh, and Louisiana over here, Mississippi, Alabama, Missouri, and Maine are going to join together. Uh, and now you're starting to deal with the issue of balance of power between slave states and free states because every time you add a new state you add a representative or many representatives depending on our population you add two new senators crucially uh, and that affects the balance of power and so you add Missouri for example as a slave state well you're going to add Maine as a free state so there's two new free state senators two new slave state senators though it's important to note that just because a person is from a free state or a slave state doesn't mean they necessarily identify with that side of that issue. You've got very often, for example, guys like uh, Franklin Pierce, who's from a northern state but is very much pro-slavery on the slavery issue. James Buchanan, same thing. So uh, at this point still, Michigan, Wisconsin are not states. The the, the spread is going directly west, but not, I mean, it's going west further than it's, um, quicker than it's going north, which is always kind of interesting to me. John Quincy Adams is now president of the United States. There you see he's written the idea of manifest destiny. Uh, so at this point now, you're going to get Andrew Jackson, and we'll, we'll wait until he shows up here. Andrew Jackson's going to come to power. Uh, you've got the Cherokee right here who... The Cherokee um, do their best to modernize. So they form kind of a democratic government. They dress like the European, the people of European descent do. They embrace technology, uh, but they have their own government. And uh, they end up going to the Supreme Court uh, against the Jackson administration. They win in the Supreme Court. And then Jackson says, well, they... Uh, the Supreme Court made their ruling. Now let's see them enforce it. And he basically completely ignores the Supreme Court. Uh, so you've got this balance of power, this checks and balances system between the three forms of government. And you've got one of the branches of government just completely ignoring one of the other branches of government in their ruling. And so Jackson uh, and then later on other administrations, they're going to ship all of these natives to what's going to become Indian territory, which is modern day Oklahoma. And now, of course, you see we're um, running up against Mexico, who has gotten its independence from uh, from Spain. And now we're going to get into the War of Texas Independence, 1836. Uh, and this is driven heavily by Americans who have settled in Texas. And they're going to rebel against the, uh, the authorities there, the Mexican authorities. They're going to form for about a decade or so a um, government of their own. But it was always kind of understood that Texas really wanted to be a part of the United States. And so uh, Polk is going to come to, to power uh, and he's only going to serve one term, which he promises to do, but he's very heavily involved in Western expansion. That's a big part of his platform. And the first step of that is to annex Texas. And so they're going to send troops down to basically pick a fight with the Mexicans. Uh, it was understood that the United States can't be seen as the aggressors, but if we can kind of goad Mexico into appearing to start the fight, then we can march on Mexico City, basically. And that's what happens. Uh, Texas is going to be annexed. Uh, the Mexicans are going to be defeated in this war. And the United States is going to acquire most of what has become going to become the southwest part of the country. And now you're starting to see the modern border of the United States is largely in place. There'll be little disputes here and there, like the Gadsden Purchase is going to happen down here. There's going to be dis some disputes with the British uh, about the border and where Oregon Territory is going to go. But by and large, that's the borders now. But 
most of that central and western part of the United States is still occupied by Native Americans. Uh, and so now it's an issue of you've got California all the way over there in the west uh, that is going to become a state. Uh, you have the gold rush, and so a ton of people travel on the Oregon Trail uh, to go out to the west. But how do you get to California? Well, you've got to go down. Uh, one of the most common routes for doing that is to actually go down to the Isthmus of Panama. It's the shortest land connection between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Go across there and then take a ship up the other side. And, and uh, the U.S. is going to send the military out there. And Ulysses S. Grant writes about this in his autobiography where he talks about uh, I think he was with the 4th U.S. Infantry, and they are redeployed to California. And the way that they do that, because it's safer to go down through Panama than it is to go across all of this Indian territory, uh, and, and they're going to go down there and they're going to get illness and disease, malaria, things like that, and hundreds of these people on this expedition are going to die, and Grant's going to be one of the few people who survives to make it to California. So California is not an easy place to get to. So now people are thinking, how can we make this faster? Well, now we've got the railroad. So the idea of a transcontinental railroad is going to be born, and they're going to think about ways to make that happen. The American Civil War is going to break out here in just a second, so now you've got the Confederacy there. All right, had to stop and catch my breath. I don't know that I've ever gone 24 minutes on three minutes of video before, but here we are. Uh, if you like what you see, if you enjoy the style of what I do. If you're new to the channel, I know we title these reactions, but really I'm taking these original content creators and we're using them as our textbook to have a conversation about history. So if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button and hit the like button on the video if you would. It does really help a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, let's get back into this. The American Civil War and Reconstruction afterwards, of course. Now, look at the borders. Oh my gosh, now we actually see the states as they exist. The Colorado Territory, New Mexico and Arizona Territories. Nevada has become a state. Nevada was actually admitted to the Union during the Civil War. There were two states admitted to the Union during the Civil War, the other one being West Virginia, uh, which was formed out of Virginia in 18, excuse me, 63. Oregon uh, has become a state. Uh, you've got... Uh, the Utah Territory, the Idaho Territory, Montana Territory. But of course, again, living in some of these territories are the Apache and the Lakota Sioux and others. Some of these tribes are going to ally themselves with the United States. Others are going to resist, and that's where you're going to have what we call the Plains Indians Wars. So now in the aftermath of the American Civil War, uh, you've got... Uh, systems in place for the rapid expansion west. You've got the Homestead Act passed by uh, during the uh, Lincoln administration. You're going to have the uh, Transcontinental Railroad is happening right about this time. Uh, and so rapid expansion west is happening. Uh, Alaska has just become part of the United States, 1867. Uh, Secretary of State Seward is going to be blamed for what is called Seward's Folly in purchasing Russia or purchasing Alaska from Russia, but then great resources like gold and then later oil are going to be found there that's going to make all the difference. But still, for the most part, I mean, like Western Minnesota is still the frontier. Uh, in fact, you have some Civil War generals who uh, like John Pope, who were disgraced in the Civil War, who get sent west to places like that to fight uh, these Native American tribes. There are wars and, and battles going on against the natives, even while the Civil War is still happening. Grant is now president. Uh, so now you've solidified Nevada and Oregon uh, as uh, states with their existing territory. The Utah Territory, of course, the Mormons are going to settle there. Colorado becomes a state. Now, at this point, we're 1888. So this is uh, 90 years before yours truly comes along. Uh, Grover Cleveland is the one and only Democrat president in a period of history from uh, 1869 all the way up through to um, Woodrow Wilson's inauguration in 1913. So for that period of 50 years or so, Grover Cleveland's the only Democrat president, and he's pretty conservative as Democrats go. Um, so at this point, 
you you have Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Oregon, Nevada, California are all states. Uh, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine territories in the West. Dakota Territory, of course, is going to be split in half. And boom, 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 just like that. I, the reason I paused when I did is I wanted you to see how quickly all of those states become states. So watch this. We're at Grover Cleveland uh, is president, and then 1888-89, when you uh, go, when you go into Benjamin Harrison as president. Uh, boom, 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 all those states come about. And now you've only got a few more territories. Oklahoma has been settled. Now we've got to go to a bigger view here. Why is that? Because Hawaii and the Philippines and Guam and Puerto Rico have been uh, taken by the United States. This is that period when European powers are gobbling up Africa and European powers are gobbling up areas of the South Pacific, and so the United States is going to get involved in that. How does the United States get involved? Well, under people like Theodore Roosevelt, the U.S. Navy is going to grow, and it's going to be a projection of American power. Panama Canal Zone becomes ceded to the United States so the Panama Canal can be built. Why? So that the United States has an easier time projecting its naval power because now we can send ships down through the Panama Canal. It's easier to get them from the east, which is where a lot of our shipbuilding capacity is, to the west where we are trying to project our power in the Pacific Ocean. World War I happens. Now the United States has become a major world power. World War One's one of the things that helps project that power. Uh, now we're into the Great Depression. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this part because most of expansion has happened now. Uh, the Philippines are going to be taken by the Japanese. Then the Americans will take them back. American Samoa, Hawaii, and Alaska are going to become our most recent states in 1959 uh, when they are added to uh, given statehood. And... We're very unlikely to see any new states anytime soon. There's a lot of movement towards making Puerto Rico a state, making Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, which includes Washington, um, into a state. I, I think it's highly unlikely in today's political climate because, again, just like it was 150, 200 years ago, the ramifications of adding a new state are that there are new representatives and new senators. And with such a delicate balance of power going back and forth where we're almost evenly divided, especially in the Senate, nobody's going to want to make a move that's going to give the other political party two quick senators, which is what would happen in, in those cases. So that's pretty much to the modern times. I mean, there's little changes here and there about things. The Philippines, of course, are given their uh, independence. Um, Panama Canal Zone is given back over to Panama, but really not a lot else changes. So I think we'll go ahead and stop it right there. But uh, that was really interesting. I, I rather enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. I do want to give a quick shout out and a thank you to Kyle Martin in Tennessee uh, and Stephen Coghill. I hope I'm pronouncing that right in Kentucky. Thank you guys so much for your support on Patreon. It means the world to me. If you'd like to consider becoming a patron, the link is in the description of every video, as well as a lot of other links to uh, other channels that I have and things like that. New, new video up on the gaming channel today. Hope you'll check that out as well. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.